We're talking true vintage tonight. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Tonight, we're going to take a look at a late 50s Gibson Les Paul Custom. But first, we need to remember what they look like. Normally, they're going to have three humbuckers like this one that we documented. This particular one had a Bigsby on it, a la Jimmy Page. It's got your nice fretless wonder frets, straight up jet black ebony finish. These things are gorgeous. I was lucky enough to borrow one when we first created this episode. But a non-Bigsby version would look like this, with its gorgeous headstock and waffle back tuners. Now take a look at what True Vintage Guitar recently listed. This is a really cool find, so apparently this was painted very early on in its life. But it's just over top of the finish, so if somebody really wanted to remove this, they might be able to. But it's got such a cool vibe to it. Like if you go look at a 60s dove, you've got the branches that our little feathered friend is sitting on, you've got the flowers and patterns. If anything, it actually reminds me of the Montana gold headstock. <laughs> All the wheat. But anyways, what I'm getting at is it kind of works on this guitar. It's very tastefully done. And now that the clear coat's aged, the golden hue matches the rest of the paint job. But yet they still have some red accent pieces here or there. But what's extra cool is factory stock nickel hardware. No, all the gold has just been worn off of it. Isn't that just fantastic? It even has many of the original hang tags yet. Apparently this one belongs to a junior that the person who sold it to the shop traded into this custom a long time ago. But it still has this toggle switch one. As far as the headstock goes, honestly in pretty decent shape all things considered. Looks like somebody has replaced the nut that runs just a little shy of the binding. And it had some playability issues so the original fretless wonders were ditched for a more 59 style fret wire. However, they try to make it look as original as possible without putting the fret wire over top of the binding. I like what they did there. As far as the backside, the neck has got some wear to it. In fact, ooh, I hadn't I didn't see that before. This looks like original finish up to here, but maybe the neck was reshot at one point in time. Looks like they're disclosing finish over spray. So if that truly did happen in the early 50s, maybe it was done to kind of preserve the finish because all you're seeing here is the clear coat continuing to age. At least it's not in this area, so you have to be scared of a headstock break. You just have to worry about the heel. But the back is surprisingly clean. But now let's get to the beauty shots. Yeah. That's a great photo in the black and gold case because it matches the guitar perfectly. You know what? I might need to go back on what I said earlier, that you could technically remove this. It would be just like the neck. You would probably just be left with a slightly more black outline of everything because the clear coat wouldn't have aged as much in those particular areas. So it would be on the guitar regardless, so you might as well leave it alone. I wouldn't suggest doing this to your current vintage guitar, but it's so great when it happened in the past because you have no excuse but to appreciate it for what it is, especially when it's loaded with triple PAFs. Another example of a guitar that you just have to love and enjoy as is, is that 57 special that we just recently documented. The Mystic Maiden, as I called it. Like, there's no way you can restore these guitars without doing a complete refinish, so you might as well just enjoy them for what they are, because they're character pieces. They become less about what they initially were, I mean, that certainly helps than more so about what they can be and the tales that they could tell if guitars could speak to us in a language that we could understand besides music. Kind of the same thing for super ultra road dogs like Old Smokey. <laughs> Feel free to check out this episode if you want to learn more about that tale. There's just something too, a great old worn guitar that makes them feel and play special. But if you're interested in this 1958 custom, it's currently listed for $75,000 on the True Vintage Guitar website. And you can visit his YouTube video if you want to hear how it sounds and hear the story firsthand. But before we continue on to all the other great models, we need to hear a word from our sponsor tonight, Sweetwater. Sweetwater is a great place to buy all your new gear, and that's from electric guitars to pianos, orchestral instruments. My favorite thing is the fact that you can pick out the instrument that you want, from your weight down to the serial number to the kind of top. When I'm looking for something special, I always go to Sweetwater, and they're going to hook you up with a sales engineer that's going to not only help you with this sale, but many of other sales down the road as well. I think I've been with mine for nearly 15 years now. So thank you, Sweetwater, for being a long-term sponsor of my show. Next is a story that's been sending the guitar world into a craze. Somebody is claiming to have gotten an original 52 Les Paul for 200 bucks. 
He basically posted to Reddit saying, hey, is this real? Did I get a good deal, etc. So let's see. Yeah, from this photo, I can pretty much tell you it's legit. The original Les Pauls, they're not that good because apparently they forgot to take into account the top carve. So instead of overwrapping their trapeze tailpiece, they had to underwrap them, which means you can't do palm muting. Now there's modern day things that you can throw on the guitars now to make it proper, but this has got the great finish checking. Like even if this was fake, it'd be well worth the 200 bucks. But everything I'm seeing here is 1000% correct, even have the really tall speed knobs which were kind of a shortly lived thing. And then look at that fretboard. Somebody had some long fingernails in the cowboy cord area and them inlays be popping out. But the back of the next finish wear matches what we saw on the front. Headstock's got the low logo, but that is correct for the early 50s. Back is looking pretty good. A little bit chewed up, but not too bad overall. But uh oh, no serial number, 1000% fake. No, the original ones didn't have them. So I saw enough on this that, you know, somebody who's not really intimate with the Gibson branding might think, oh, something's off here. So the guitar, 1000% real. However, I'm not sure if I believe the story because apparently it's for sale. And if you read through the comments long enough, he says he's going to use it to pay college tuition. This would be a great way to drum up excitement for a guitar and then get the guy who wants to pay the retail value. But maybe that's what this post mainly was about, trying to get an idea of what it's worth. Now, when you start going down here and people say it's worth 30,000 and whatnot, that's a bit high for something like this. Many of these actually have neck angle issues and there's tons of them on the market right now. I mean, 30,000 is like sitting at Groon's guitars. I mean, for example, here's one for 25 and a half. So far, looks kind of similar as far as our condition goes. Yeah, well, it does have the weird looking headstock that got damaged, but it's in better condition otherwise. But oh, okay, that was an all gold at one point in time. Ouch. <laughs> Maybe that's not a good comparison point. But if I've learned anything selling true vintage guitars, these are just asking prices. What they sell for, usually a lot less. It really wasn't that long ago when these were nine to thirteen thousand dollar guitars so personally i think somewhere around that 20k-ish range is where this one would sell so the guitar 100 percent authentic i just don't know if i believe the story or not but hey it is what it is it got the internet talking about it but our next true vintage guitar tonight is a les paul that looks a little bit different this one just popped up on reverb right before i was recording this episode and i thought hey that looks like fun so it's one of the early ones that initially had the sideways vibrola onto it but somebody has taken it off plugged the holes and then converted it to a stop bar which is a fantastic thing to do if you're looking to play the things and keep it in tune although it does look like it's a little bit lower than usual but then you flip it over to the back. Yeah, you got the discoloration on the neck, but it kind of makes it look like a cherry sunburst. But you've got a serial number. It's not scratched out. You don't have any type of headstock break. And the seller has blacklight photos. Fantastic. So it looks like some other tuners have been on this at some point in time. Not a big deal. But oof, there it is. Somebody put wooden dowels in the edge of the neck. However, they're saying that there's no other brakes, cracks, or repairs. So it looks to me like there is some finished touch up right here. So it was a relatively clean heel separation and not the worst repair we've ever seen on one of these. You can get a great deal on a vintage one if you're not worried about some repairs. Now, obviously you want to check it out, make sure it still plays good. Neck angle is correct because just because it looks like it was repaired well, I can't vouch for how well it plays, but it looks like the truss rod should be in good shape as long as it moves. They're giving you one of the later 80s chainsaw cases. If you buy this, please, please swap that out. This is the worst version. It's Gen 4 where they take out all the padding in the case. All this stuff you're seeing, that's just the felt. They do not have any padding in here. They took away your compartment door. It's not just missing. I'm surprised they didn't ditch the bottom latch or something. Gen 4 cases, I do not suggest. And somebody took your Gibson badge. And it looks like we're rocking some sort of a Seymour Duncan pickup in here. So how much is this one? 6900 Not that much more than a modern day reissue. So you can get the vintage wood if you don't mind the repairs. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.